Hi and welcome to shikhan.com. Our today's course is about Microsoft Office Excel 2007. In today's course, we will learn how to use Microsoft Excel to create new data entries, how to perform various calculations and also how to use the tools, how to set up a page layout, how to use grab from insert option and then finally, we will also learn how to print our tables from the print menu. Now before getting into the topic of Microsoft Excel 2007, let's learn about Microsoft Excel first. Microsoft Excel is a type of software where we use rows and columns to systematically record data by using the entries. These data can be of three types. First is numbering, second is text and thirdly formula. Now by using these formulas, we can calculate multiple rows and multiple columns and get a data analysis report. So let's begin today's class. Firstly, to get started, you need to install Microsoft Office Excel 2007 software in your computer. After installing, we can go to the Office folder. Then we can open Microsoft Office Excel 2007 or the version of Office that you have installed. After running the software, we can see that the first screen has appeared. As we already know, Microsoft Excel uses rows and columns to make new data sheets. Therefore, we can see that the page that has appeared consists of various rows and columns all over the place. It has hundreds and hundreds of columns and millions and millions of rows. And if we scroll down, we can make hundreds and millions more if we need to. On the top, we can see that we have some options that are called toolbars. Firstly, we have Home, then Insert, then Page Layout, then Formulas, Data, Review and View. And as we go on through the course, we will learn about all these options one by one thoroughly. Now at the beginning, when we need to work with our documents, we need to learn how to save our file. To save the file, we have to go to the top left corner. After clicking this option, we need to click save. Now we need to select a directory where we want our document to be saved. Here you can see that I am selecting desktop. Now if you wish to save it in any other directory, you can do that by selecting the directory that you want to save it in. This needs to be done because by any chance if our file closes, then our document will always be saved. Now for learning purpose, we are selecting desktop. New folder. After getting into the new folder, we can see that in the bottom it says file name. In the blank space that is given under here, we will write the name of the document, class 01. After that, we can see here save as type, which lets you save the document that you are saving currently in the type that you want to save it in. We can see that several formats are given here, which we can use to save our document in several formats that we need to use. But for now, we will use Excel workbook named format. Let's click save. Now let's minimize to the desktop and go to Excel 2007. We can see that our file is saved here. Now let's close the original file and open this file by double clicking it. So the file that we were originally working on will now open here by opening that file. Now secondly, we will be learning about the workflow, which means we will be learning about the page that we will be working on. For working in Excel, we can see that we need to use these boxes to work upon. So let's learn about how to use these boxes. Now all these boxes have an individual identification location, which means if I click here, then we can identify which box we are in because it produces a unique location name. For example, as you can see after clicking here, K has been highlighted here and here 11 has been highlighted. Therefore, the box that I have selected here will be named as K11. And if I select it here, this will be E2. So to know the location of a single box, I have to take the name from this column and number from this row. Both of these together make the name of the box. Now let's select this box instead and this will be B4. And in case if we don't understand the name, we can get the name from this dialog box here. 
Once again, if we select this box, we can see it is 011. And when we go to this dialog box here, we can also see it is written 011. To know the name of the box, this is very important to work with Excel sheets. Because when we will be doing formulas, we will be needing these names for using in the formulas afterwards. So the first thing that we learned is that to work in Excel, we need to use these boxes. And to know the name of these particular boxes, we need to notice the letter on the top column bar. And from the left side, we need to notice the row number. So now let's select the box A1. After selecting, if we type something here, While we type, we will notice, although we started working from cell number A1, but our title, Star Design Sales Report for 2019, we can notice that it has reached up to cell number D1. Now if we click outside the area, we will see, our text is combined into 4 cells, but the written text is not added into 4 different cells. The reason is, if we click on B1, we can see the value is empty. Now if we click on A1, then we will see, all the written text is still in A1. So, when our text is larger than our boxes, we can manage it in two ways. One of which is, we can drag the column and enlarge it. In this case, we can select the column and drag it according to our size. In this case, we have to keep one thing in mind, that the rows that we have here will always be the largest rows. But it won't be the same here, because the first reason is our heading. That is the reason why these are large now. In the next instances, they may not be that large. We will use Ctrl plus Z to go back. Ctrl plus Z is the shortcut key to go back. We have to remember the shortcut keys to make our work easier. So we have this name in 4 cells. Now what we will do to fix this is, we will use Merge tool. This will be done by first clicking on A1 and dragging through using our mouse. Now we can see that the four boxes have been selected after dragging on those boxes. Now after that, in the top center position, we can see an option here named Merge and Center. Now after simply clicking on this option, and after returning to our boxes, we can see that the four boxes that we were using before have been merged into one. And now if I want, I cannot select B1 or C1. So this is what we call merge tool. If we want to merge multiple columns together, then also we can select merge. For example, if we want to do these six boxes together, or let's say here we click and drag and we select these two columns with 10 boxes together. After clicking merge in center, now we can see that this whole area has turned into one single box. Now right beside merge, there is an arrow where we can find 4 more options, which we will see step by step onward. Let's undo with Ctrl Z. So we learned how to merge a number of boxes and use it as one with merge and center. After that, as this is a title, we would like to use a font with this title, which means I can enlarge the title or maybe color it or maybe change the style of the font. And for doing that, I need to change the settings here. So let's see the options here. The first option present here is called font family, which means the style of the font I want can be chosen from this font family here. So when I select one font from this family, I can see the style of the font changing in the table. Therefore, by choosing the font style from this list, we can change the font style to anything that we want. However, officially we use Arial Black or Times New Roman font for using in office related purposes. So now let's choose Arial and press enter. Now secondly, we would like to enlarge the font. For doing this, we can see that there is a number right beside font family, which says 11, which means the default font size is 11. In standard formatting and for official purposes, 11 and 12 sizes are used in formatting. But as this is the headline, we can enlarge it further or color it even, so that it looks more like a headline. So let's make it 20 or 18, then we can see that our font in the table has enlarged. But 
our writing has hidden behind the boxes now. We can see that the merged columns are now not able to capture the whole text as the font is enlarged now. So now let's merge it further. So now, if we merge it to H, then we can see that our whole heading is now visible in the table. Therefore, in this class we learnt that how to take multiple columns and merge them together, how to change font family and how to resize fonts, which means how to change the size of the fonts. Now after that, if we see down here, this B sign means bold. If we press it, we can see our font is now in bold. Now this accents our heading more, as by looking through the naked eye, anyone can see and understand that the bolded line is the title. If it was not bold, then it would have mixed with the other elements in the table. Right beside B, we can see I, which means italic, and then underline. If we want our text to be a little slanted, then we would click I. And to underline our text, we would click U. So now we can see that we have made our text bold, underlined and italic. Now this is based upon your choice. You can choose how you want to format your heading and use these options on your liking. Now beside underline, if we click the arrow, we can see two options, underline and double underline. Now by clicking double underline, we can see that there are two underlines now. So now if we want to give a line double underline, we can give double underline or we can give it a single underline. It is not mandatory to use all the options all the time. All these options are used on how you want it to look like. We will learn about this option later on. Right beside that, we can see two color options. This option changes the font color. In this color bar, as I move my mouse, we can see that the font color is changing on the table. Now, if we select the left option, we can see that it changes the background color. So now we can see that we are getting two options from here. One changes the cell's color, which means if I select any area on the table and select this option, then we can see that the selected area now has a single background color that is chosen. Similarly, if I write inside and then select the writing and change the font color, then we can see that the font color of the selected text has also changed. Therefore, by using Excel, we can change the size, the style, the background color and the color of the font, by doing which we can design our Excel sheet as we want and make it more beautiful. So guys, today we learnt that how to open an Excel file and save it. We also learnt that how to address the location of the column and also how to mark it, which means if I select this box, which is E18, can be seen on the topmost side. Then we learned how to resize fonts, how to merge and including some minor formatting, we learned all these topics in the first video. In the next video, we will talk about the further steps. Thank you.